Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome, welcome to today's event. If you don't know where you are, you are in the April online meetup from, well, I guess it's from Sousa now. I'm so used to saying from Rancher. It's the April online Sousa Rancher meetup by Sousa and Rancher. Uh, today we're gonna be talking, uh, well, you can see my slide, it's up there for you. We're gonna be talking about Hipper. All right, so let's, we're a minute in, probably get some more people who join. So let's just go ahead and get started because we have a lot of stuff to go through today. First of all, my name is Adrian Goings. I am the technical evangelist, a technical evangelist here at SUSE, formerly from Rancher. And I am joined today by Matt Farina. Matt, are you here? Can you get introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Farina. Uh, I work on new projects over here, new software things that we're building. Uh, I'm also one of the Helm maintainers. I've been doing that for several years. And I work in upstream Kubernetes, mostly uh, under Kubernetes SIG apps. And so I've been around the space for a while. Some of you may know who I am, uh, especially if you've been around the Helm space. When I found out that Matt was a Helm maintainer, I was like, oh, wow, like, like I am not worthy. Like, this is a super, super cool way to contribute back to the community. Before we get started on the reason that we're here today, there's housekeeping. So if you've ever been to a Rancher meetup, you know that this is a meetup. It's not a webinar. We're not just going to show you stuff. This is an interactive thing where we're showing you new technology with live demos because we want to hear well, we want you to get excited about it. We're excited about it. And we will have lots of opportunity for you to ask questions, for us to answer them, and so on. And of course, if you've ever been to one of our meetups, you know that frequently things don't work because we're always pushing the limits. We don't pre-record our demos. This is all live. And sometimes things just don't work because that's the reality of life. Don't worry about it. We're not going to worry about it. If something breaks, we'll fix it and we'll just move on. If you look at the little go to webinar question or whatever the, the UI thing, there's a questions panel. Uh, if you think of a question, ask it there. The only thing that I ask is that you keep the questions on topic for what we're showing you today. So questions around Helm and Hipper and the technology that you're seeing. If you ask questions that are unrelated, we, we probably won't be able to answer them. But as you'll see in a moment, there are other places that you can go to get those answered. But there are no bad questions. There's no stupid question. If you have a question, when you think of it, post it there. We'll pause periodically throughout the meetup and we'll answer those questions. And then we'll just, we'll take the rest of them at the end. I mentioned a moment ago that there are other places that you can go to get your questions answered. One of those is the Rancher Users Slack workspace. So you can get an invitation for that at slack.rancher.io. And if you already have an invitation, join there. There are tens of thousands of people registered. There are thousands of people online at any time. There are channels for every single piece of technology and project that we have going on, and it's the place to go for community support. The other place that you can go is the new SUSE and Rancher community. This is brand new, and it's a place to go and meet other people in the community. It's, it's almost like a social network, like somewhere between Facebook meets LinkedIn meets forums. And you can interact with other people in the community. You can follow people. You can post content there. You can link to content that you find interesting. And it's it's really a long-term community space to talk about the stuff that's going on within SUSE and Rancher and your experiences using all of those projects and technologies. So check that out at community.susa.com. And I will have that slide up again at the end. We'll revisit all of these things at the end. This is what we're going to do today, the intro, which we're in right now. And then Matt's going to introduce you to a super cool piece of technology that we're putting together called Hipper. He'll tell you what it is, why it is, what problems it's trying to solve, and how it will benefit you in what you do with Kubernetes. And then we're going to show it to you. And after that, we'll just take any other questions that remain. But remember, when you think of a question, ask it. I'll actually be in the questions panel doing my best to answer questions live. If you have a question that you specifically want Matt to answer, you can put that in the question and I'll set it aside for, for him to talk about. But with that, I am actually going to hand this over to Matt. You ready? I am. You are now the presenter. Perfect. 
So the first thing, if we're going to ask what is HIPAA, to understand what it is, where it's going on, and where we're at, is is to first look at what is Helm and to dig into Helm a little bit more. We use Helm uh, uh, quite a lot around here at Rancher and Sousa. And so we wanna dig a little bit more into what's going on with Helm to see where we'd wanna build and extend it. Cause that's really what Hipper ends up being is something built on Helm, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. So what is Helm? Helm is a package manager. It's inspired by Apt and Yum and many of the other package managers that were around at the time that it was created. But instead of being for an individual server, it's for a Kubernetes cluster. And it's, you know, some people talk about templating, they talk about other things, but at its core, it is a package manager. And just like other package managers have repositories of things, um, you know, I'm working on a Mac, and so uh, you can use Brew to install things in those repositories, there's taps. That same idea across package managers is with Helm, because it's about sharing and installing and doing many of those other things. Um, but when you think about who uses a package manager with Kubernetes, you actually see there's some varying roles involved in that. And so at the top, I like, you know, I called it an inverted cake because it gets bigger as you go up the stack. There's more application developers than there are application operators than there are cluster operators. In fact, there's more cluster operators than there probably are people building the software to do the clusters, uh, such as Kubernetes and things like that. And when we look at these different roles, quite often they have slightly different needs and what they want to do. Somebody who's developing an applications to run in Kubernetes and maybe just wants to grab some dependencies to run along with it is far different in terms of their environment than somebody who's operating a cluster. Um, and Helm is explicit about those roles. If you go into the Helm documentation, in, in this case in the community repo, we talk about roles that are in scope and, and these are even in priority order, and then the roles that are not in scope. And so you've got things like an application operator, a distributor, that's somebody who packages up charts to deliver them for other people to install. Something we do here at SUSE Rancher, uh, an application developer, and, and we prioritize somebody operating applications more than developing them. And we even come down to the role of somebody who's developing Helm itself. But one of those things that's not in scope is a cluster operator. Now, if that cluster operator is going to go operate workloads in Kubernetes, then we put them into that application operator persona. But it's different if you're trying to operate something like um, a Kubernetes or a, a WordPress that you'll do handle differently as somebody who's using namespaces rather than somebody who's trying to do system services. In fact, let, let's look at that for a minute here, right? I like to think of a, a cluster kind of like an office building right and you've got different spaces in that building and tenants in those spaces so to speak people who occupy those spaces right they might have refrigerators or multiple refrigerators all in that space but the building manager who handles it does um, services that service all of them things like water and electric they got to make sure all this stuff works heat air conditioning uh, for the whole building for people in all of those spaces they have to make work and so if we take this to like a Kubernetes example, right? You've got tenants in namespaces and Kubernetes has to handle that. And Helm has to figure for those kinds of situations. It has to deal with things like multi-tenancy and users not being able to, to see each other's workloads or even know that they exist. There's users who will, are clusters that will have um, many, many tenants. Sometimes you might have a thousand different people who are engaging in these namespaces and in these clusters in order to run their workloads in those things. And quite often they can't see what's going on with each other. And so when you install things and when you manage things in a namespace, you do it with the realization of, we have to do things in a way that works just within that that's small defined scope and doesn't get to see those other things. And Helm has to take this multi-tenancy and all the problems that go with it into account because it's really targeting that application operator. Um, and I, I like to use WordPress as an example, not just because WordPress is the perennial example, but because it is one of those uh, end user applications that's far from cluster services. And then of course, you've got to deal with things like multiples. Uh, somebody installs the same application into a namespace many times. Um, I've seen an application be installed into a namespace uh, hundreds of times um, on purpose as just part of their setup. 
And so multiples of things in the same namespace, much less multiples being across different namespaces, is one of those things that Helm supports as a first class citizen and has to think about because it is so common, right? But then if you start thinking about maybe op services, right, that the cluster operator is going to install uh, to help and support all of those tenants, right? Maybe it's an operator for Postgres, so that way you can have Postgres as a service in your cluster. That's really the kind of thing that you're installing and dealing with for the users of the cluster. And those services, those different things you install, may know about each other and they're cluster wide. And you, so you look at it with a, a different scope and a different view and mind and a different way of handling those things. Now, Helm has to take, can't make the strict assumptions for that cluster operator and the kinds of system services because it has to deal with all of those other things. It's, it can't be that opinionated on purpose. Um, and that leads to certain things like, you know, people like to talk about Helm and CRDs and the way it uh, doesn't uh, do a lot of CRD handling and, and for that. And the reason is, is if you have to deal with multi-tenancy, many things in a cluster, it turns out that there's a lot involved in thinking through that problem. And so Helm can't be that opinionated to handle those situations. And what I'm sharing up here is HIP 11 for Helm. And HIPs are the Helm improvement proposals. And this one, if you printed it, this to a PDF, it's more than 10 page, well more than 10 pages long, describing the whole situation around Helm and assumptions and users and CRDs and how CRDs work and the intricacies of them. In fact, if you're a Helm user and you're curious about CRDs, I really suggest you go read this. It's well-written and it lays out all of the complexities that go on across the cluster. And so Helm can only be so opinionated in the way it handles things to handle all those situations. And of course, with Rancher, we end up doing a fair amount with Charge. And here you can see this is the uh, 2.5 dashboard looking at the apps and marketplace, a fresh install. And you, you can start to see some of the things. Now here you see a lot of system services, logging, monitoring, uh, Istio. You know, These are not the kinds of things that you end up tend to install as a single application or multiple times in a cluster. They're system services. And so we have actually done more on top of Helm to try to enable features for us, right? And in fact, if you go open up one of those charts, here's the fleet chart. And if you look in the chart.yaml, so if you went and pulled our chart down that we install, it's publicly available and you extract it and you pull out and you look in the chart.yaml file, you'll find annotations. Helm, just like um, Kubernetes resources can have annotations in it. And they're key value pairs, just simple key value pairs that can tell you information. But this information can then be read by the installer inside of Rancher when it goes to install things to tell it what to do. It can tell you things like the release name, uh, the namespace to install something in. So that information is all encapsulated in the chart so that way the installer knows the right place to put things. And you can almost think of it like uh, if I'm using a package manager on Linux and I want to install a system service into the same place repeatedly over and over and over, this is kind of that metadata. And so with Rancher, we've been doing this for a while and we wanted to say, how do we make this a little bit more generic, reusable, um, and have more than just our specific business logic doing it? And so that gets into what is Hipper? And, and that idea is what born, uh, brought Hipper to life. How do we take this business logic on top of Helm, really targeted at, um, kind of cluster operators and a lot of it around dependencies and management and those kinds of things that we've been doing and make it more of a general purpose tool that we can reuse more within the products and services we're continuing and projects we're continuing to create um, and, and within our own stuff and just share it with everyone at large. And so Hipper as a name is Helm, the H in Helm plus Zipper. Uh, Zipper is a package manager that's used in SUSE's Linux distributions. And it's really good at looking at the different services and versions and making sure everything on your system is, is lined up to work well within itself and with each other. Um, and it's the package manager. If you're using something like OpenSUSE and you go to install something, you'll be using Zipper 
uh, instead of apt or yum or something else to install packages quite often. And so that's where the name came from. It's it's hipper. It's the combination of those two. So you can see some of the SUSE legacy uh, impacting here. And so warning, of course, as always, this is in development. And so when we put hipper out, uh, this is the first time today that we are sharing it publicly with people to see, to pick on, to uh, come up with ideas for, or to file issues on, or, or test run in bugs. And so this is, today is the, the grand opening. So just keep that in mind and be gentle with me. All right, so here's kind of the, the block diagram architecture of, of how, how HIPAA works internally in itself. So the HIPAA client, and it's kind of like the, the Helm client, the command function, uh, wraps CLI functionality. And it talks to uh, HIPR SDK because we wanted to make it something that could be imported. Helm has an SDK. If you uh, helm.sh slash helm slash v3 is where the current SDK is at slash package, uh, will get you to most of the business logic and functionality for interacting with Helm things and building on top of it. Rancher has been using that for quite a while. And here we do the same kind of thing. We have a HIPR SDK, so other things in Rancher can import it and use that functionality. But it's all built on top of the Helm SDK. And that means out of the box, you get things like templating is the same as Helm. In fact, all chart stuff is generally the same as Helm. We've just layered on business logic that's defined through annotations. Repo handling, we're able to build on top of Helm's business logic. So when Helm installs a chart, we can start with that and then we can extend it for our own needs. The Kubernetes client, if you didn't know, Helm has its own Kubernetes client, and it's not really its own Kubernetes client. It's a wrapper around API, API machinery, and um, client Go, because those APIs change all the time, and we needed something that stayed the same for all of Helm's interactions through its major release. <clears throat> and then, of course, releases and storing release information in a cluster. Uh, we inherit all those things from the Helm SDK, and then we are just building on top of that. And so this is the layout and, and how it communicates with um, Kubernetes itself. All right, so let's talk about the first feature. The first feature you can see here, and we declare it through annotations in a chart, is the ability to specify a release name and namespace. Um, the ones that you saw earlier from Rancher itself, it'll respect those as well, but these are the names we're currently going with here. Uh, and so if these are specified, Hipper will go and uh, when you go to install a chart, instead of having to specify a release name or namespace, it'll first look here. Now you can specify the name or namespace and override those and there's way to do it, but by default, it looks inside of a chart and installs here. So it can be repeatable across every system that we go install it in. And so if every time we go to install, yeah, you get the idea. Um, and then we get into the next big feature that we've already been working on is shared dependencies, which really think system services here. You've got service A and service B, both depend on service C. And so we do those. Now those can be different services in different namespaces. Uh, they can be installed separately or at the same time. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But they are, it's how do we handle this? Now, when you think of normal Helm dependencies, um, normal Helm dependencies, right? You got WordPress and say you've got MySQL. MySQL chart is pulled into the charts directory inside of the chart. And then when it's rendered, um, it renders all of those templates together and sends them up and it, and it spins everything up. You'll get that within a service A or within a service B or within a service C when you spin up a chart. But if you spin up, say, A and C, they will actually be sandboxed separate from each other and installed separately from each other. So it won't be brought in together. They'll have their own releases. They'll, they'll be installed distinctly separately as if they're each an individual system service to be self-managed. Um, and again, all of this is specified using annotations. Now here we use a neat little trick. You'll see because annotations are key value pairs, there's that little line up and down. And what that says is that we have a multi-line string for the value and the multi-line string is YAML. And so we can parse that YAML and you get the data out of it. And so here, just like you do with Helm annotations, you can specify names and versions and repositories and go and install something. 
Um, here you'll actually see a little bit, we do have the rancher charts kind of forked and modified with our annotations for our, our testing purposes and to really build this out over at ranchersandbox.github.io. Um, we do have those, those hipper charts to test and play with with our annotations. And so this is how you specify those shared dependencies. And of course, this whole idea works best when you think of shared dependencies, when you think of repositories where everything is tied together. And this looks again at that same repository I was pointing out where we forked them. And you can see these different charts can work together. And you, you'll see quite often, you'll see something like rancher monitoring and rancher monitoring CRD. That's kind of a common pattern we have because you can separate those out. And that has some nice features. If you, know, you need to remove and reinstall, say your monitoring system, that's great. You definitely don't want to uninstall your CRD because you'll remove all the custom resources in your cluster across every tenant and you wouldn't want that to happen. And so there, there's some uh, ability to do stuff here by separating those out uh, for different reasons. And so uh, when you have all these things that can be tightly coupled together within a repository, this idea works really well for system resources. All right. So with that, it's time for me to switch things up and go to a demo here and show you a little bit about what we have going on. All right, can you all see my terminal window? Yes, sir, we see the terminal window. Fantastic, thank you. All right, so um, I have some charts here, uh, demo, demo A and demo B. So let's look what it looks like to install something. It's actually pretty easy. Hipper install. Oh. Now, um, what I'm doing here is, well, I have the charts listed and I have the directory. I actually have this as a repository. So let me show you that first. Uh, this will work just like Helm repositories. In fact, if I were to go add the repository, and here's to my demo ones, I could do something like this repo add oh forgot i gotta add the name in right tell me it's already exists it's skipping and you'll notice hipper uh repositories well they are just regular helm repositories um you'll see i have a different set and that's because uh, we keep the repository separate between the two. So one system does not step on another. And so even though Hipper is its own binary and its own thing and it's built on top of Helm, we're trying not to step on your Helm things on purpose. So that way we don't mess anything up over there that you may have and you can individually do things or we can individually do things. So I have set up a uh, repo. So. So I'll go ahead and I'll install something. And it's installing, oh, I forgot to use create namespace. Because again, we're, we're tentative on creating namespaces here, at least at the moment. And so it told me it wasn't there. Now it'll go ahead and install it. And it installed it as demo B into that certain demo B namespace. Now, one of the things that we can do then is we can look at the chart YAML file, and you can see the annotations are in here to say, do it in demo B with those names, right? And so it installed into that namespace and told us what it was doing. And if we do hipper LS, I'm set at the default namespace, so it doesn't see anything. So just like Helm LS, I can do dash A, and I can see demo B is installed. Now traffic's here because I'm using K3S, um, but you can see that demo B is installed. Now, what would happen if say I didn't have a release name or release namespace. If you don't have a release namespace, it's going to install it into the current namespace. But if I don't have a release name and I don't pass it one, it actually tries to make a, a healthy assumption there, or what we think is a healthy assumption. And that is to, like in this case, demo A does not have a name. So it's gonna try to guess it. So we'll go do that. In here, it decided to guess it and it's trying to use the name. Oh, again, I didn't use create namespace. And so uh, it'll go ahead and install it into that namespace. And then why? 
you can see that dash you can see everything's installed now when it does things it's doing everything with uh, normal helm stuff so if I instead switch to helm and went to look for everything helm's going to show me the same material because helm is looking at release records inside of a cluster and uh, so is hipper and so helm by default uses secrets although that's pluggable you can swap it out for a couple of other things to store your release information and hipper uses that same information because at the end of the day it's using the helm sdk and charts and all of those things and so if we actually want to go look under the hood a little bit here kubectl get my secrets across all namespaces and helm uh, we use type secrets to store everything and you can actually see it's a release and it's version one of helm's release secrets and so it knows how to look for those we've namespaced everything and done that and so you can see the secrets are there for each of those and you can see the one that's been around for a little bit since i spun up my cluster uh, with traffic and then the ones that i we just installed and so when you install something with Hipper, if you later want to switch to Helm or upgrade it or do something that Hipper doesn't support yet, uh, you can actually switch to Helm and use the Helm CLI on those things because they are just charts being installed and managed. Now, I'm going to go install these. And so we, we do have our own install and uninstall commands. I like the little fire emoji for uninstalling. That's nice. Burn it down. Yeah. So, so one of the other things that we've done here is you're going to find a little bit with emojis in here. Um, we wanted to uh, we wanted to add a little spice to the life of the CLI, and so there are other emojis. Like when you've finished installing something, there's the hand clapping, right? Nice. Uh, and so you will find some of these things throughout it. There's also color use in some places that we're adding in as well. So if, or I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but let's look at the dependency handling, right? So I talked about dependency handling. So we'll just install the demo one because the demo one is designed for dependency handling. And so it sees that there's, oh, I didn't have create namespace. And so it sees that they're there and it went ahead and installed it. And so it installed everything to where it goes. Now, one of the things you'll see here is because on the first go, it was actually able to install demo A and B. Uh, the second time around, it saw they were already installed. So it did not install it again. It did not try to install it because it wants to only have it once for, because it's a shared dependency. And if we do, or LS across namespaces, you'll see they're installed each into their own namespace. Um, and so that's one of those things where it'll skip. Now, if I try to install it again, um, it's just going to tell me, hey, it can't because the name's in use. Now, uh, we're going to go install some of these. just do that oh no 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 uh, sorry one of the things that and i'll show that again here in a second one of the things that i did here oh, let's see what i still got here oh i already did be that's why All right, create namespace. So we'll go ahead and we'll stick debug in here. And you'll see colors because things like debug in that work as it's going and figuring out what it's doing, finding charts and chart paths. Now, the reason here, these are all simple charts that I created using Helm Create because uh, with Helm Create, it's simple charts that I can run locally on K3S running locally rather than something like uh, Prometheus or something big and extravagant. Um, but this does work with other things right now. So let's see. 
So if I look at the Rancher core, I can install Fleet. And so here it's going to go ahead and install Fleet into the Fleet system namespace under that name. And now I have that installed. And if I do, yeah. I think I should see the Fleet controller, for example, is installed and it's up and running in the Fleet system namespace. So that stuff uh, works right now. So that's the gist of the functionality that we have at the moment. Let me go ahead and switch back to PowerPoint here. Um, what we have coming up in the roadmap here, because again, this is our first launch, uh, what we have is a 0 0.1.0. These are some of the things that we are working on coming up. What's Here's what's next. Um, we're gonna deal with optional and suggested dependencies. And you can think of this as a use case of say, uh, I'm developing something locally and maybe I want to write something that deals with custom resources and CRDs, but I don't want that the heavy controller and everything that goes along with it installed. Those can be added as suggested CRDs or suggested dependencies. And then in local development, I can say no to them. In other environments, I can say yes. Um, we want to do chart repositories inside OCI registries. Helm can store charts in there. But to actually have a collection of charts together with metadata and information and being able to link those, to more tightly couple them, is one of those things that needs registries for. And so we're exploring how we can do that with OCI registries. Uh, Cluster-wide version handling, you're going to see it installs things, um, but we're not doing the making sure every version is up to date. So if I installed A and D, both dependent on C, uh, it'll check to see that C is still there when I install the second of A and D but it won't do version handling. And so we're gonna get into making sure all the version handling and everything works. Uh, we wanna do filtering um, by annotations. So I could pull up a list, all right, Helm search or list through the charts or even do this through the SDK in a repository, but I can filter those based on annotations. And that's useful for us for Rancher to make sure versions of charts align with versions of Rancher. Um, but there's other places in, in, this could be used. And of course, we want to have a full SAT across the dependencies that we do, which we don't have at the moment. So the next step before we get to questions is we do have a site, hipper.io. You can go over there. You can get to install Hipper and get to the directions and everything uh, if you want that. And with that, we can go to questions. That was that was blazing fast. I don't think I've ever seen a meetup so effective, so efficient, so tactical and targeted. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed. That was nice. I, I'm sorry. I, I talked fast. Actually, no, no, you actually, you weren't even talking fast. It's obvious that you have skills as a presenter. It's just, it's, it was just great. It's like, here's the information. Here's the demo. Um, so we have lots and lots of time and we don't have lots of questions yet. Let me actually turn my camera on. Hey, look, it's me. Uh, so we have lots of time. We don't yet have lots of questions. So for those of you who are watching, if you have any questions at all, post them in the questions panel if you want Matt to go back and show anything again, because because uh, that was a lot of information packed into a really short, awesome demo, um, then, well, ask your questions. So we do have a few though, which I'll start bouncing your way. First one yeah. is from Larry. And Larry would like to know, in the shared dependencies, why do I have to repeat the repo? Why isn't it based on host or pod or namespace or cluster variables so that it's not just lots of typing? OK, so this is very new and raw. Our, our long-term goal is if the repository is left blank, then it would be the same repository as the parent. So you wouldn't necessarily need to keep repeating yourself there. Uh, we haven't done that yet, but that's one of the things that we are, are targeting for. And again, I don't know if it works today, I haven't checked, um, but the way of adding repositories and doing aliases with Helm, I think that should work. Um, if not, it's one of those things. But our end goal is, is if it's in the same repository as the parent, then we should just automatically inherit it because we don't want to have that repeat yourself. Uh, you shouldn't have to, especially if you have many dependencies. That's right. kind of the idea. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, and everybody who's watching, remember this is all like this is the this is the debutante ball of Hipper. Um, it's 
it's we're still working on it. Uh, so on that note, um, are they repos available now if people wanted to to start looking at this? That was a question from Carol. Uh, yes. In fact, if you go over to the Hipper site in the docs, uh, we talk about a repository that's rancher sandbox.github.io slash hipper chart slash repo. That has a copy of the rancher charts with the tweaks to annotations we've been playing with. And you can go use that and try that right now with charts. And these are the same charts in rancher. So they can get to that from hipper.io, right? There's a link? Yep, from hipper.io, you'll go to our docs and in our docs in the getting started and things like that, we talk about doing this kind of thing. Okay. Uh, this all being really interesting and you're showing the integration with Rancher, Detlef wanted to know, will this be backported or will it work with Rancher 2.5 or is this something that's going to work with 2.6 or does it need Rancher at all? Uh, you don't need Rancher for this. You can use this in any Kubernetes cluster uh, anywhere. Are you still there? You're frozen. Oh, yeah, I'm still there. I wonder if I'm frozen. You look pixelated to me. All right. So I'll keep talking and try to answer that. Okay. I don't have a response for Matt. That's interesting. Apparently, everybody else can hear Matt except for me. Okay. So I'll keep talking here for a minute. Uh, so you don't need Rancher for this. It works in any Kubernetes cluster at all. Uh, with Rancher, will this be pulled into Rancher? I'm hopeful that this will be able to replace some of Rancher's custom functionality if it meets those needs. Uh, a lot of the ideas that came from this came from the functionality in Rancher. And so we're hopeful to bring that back into Rancher at some point. It was actually Darren was the person who came up with a number of these ideas uh, in order to try to bring this to life based on just some of the stuff that had already been happening and the lessons learned. But if you want to go pick up and use this, you can use it in any cluster. Um, I've used it with Minikube, Kubernetes inside of Docker, K3S. I've used this with a number of things and it just works that way today. And so, uh, the integration with Rancher, if it comes there, will be something just transparent inside of Rancher. You don't need Rancher for this. All right, it looks like Adrian went offline. And so I'll try to pick up at the next questions. All right, uh, so the next question that I have here is, how are these dependency graphs defined? Is it annotations? And the answer to that is yes. We don't have full graphs yet. Um, that's one of the top things in the backlog right now to handle um, larger and more complicated graphs with the full set solver, as I talked about. Um, but it's going to be defined via annotations. And the reason for that uh, gets into YAML parsing and Go and security. Uh, the chart.yaml file, where we want to be able to store these things, you can't exactly extend that with additional properties and have that be picked up by the strict parsers. And Helm does that for security. There was this security audit a while ago and we updated based on that. And so annotations is the way to kind of add arbitrary key value things until they can be made as higher level properties. And since we're extending Helm, it's not a higher level property in Helm. So this is the appropriate way. In fact, a lot of things in Kubernetes extended using this and i think of ingress for a long time doing that kind of things and so we're going to try to keep all of our metadata uh, inside those annotations um, it's just kind of the easiest way to do that ah if you need to run something only once say a database flyway migration before installing pods I, I've never thought about using a shared dependency to do that. Um, it's possible. This is this has uh, long been kind of a, a problem in the Kubernetes space. Uh, a lot of times uh, the go-to has been to use, say, an init container. Hey, Adrian's back. I'm answering another one of the questions, by the way, now, Adrian. Um, cool. Uh, the, the if I need to run something only once one. Uh, that's where I'm at going through the list. I, um, 
so I've never really thought about using shared dependencies that way. The Kubernetes way is to use something like an init container. Um, in Helm, there are hooks. And if you go look in the Helm docs, there's hooks that can be run at different points. And so a lot of times you'll run a hook and have a container with your custom logic for that. That already works with uh, Helm. And so you can probably do that today without needing to run it, but there might be something here. I honestly don't know. I never imagined this before. Uh, uh, okay, so where were you in the list? Uh, I just finished the one, if you need to run something only once. Uh, Do you see it? It's ah, the, there we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, got it. So if you need to run something only once, database player or integration performance solution. Okay, cool. Uh, well, you have, you have the list of questions there. Sorry about that, everyone. My entire country lost internet for 30 seconds, but I'm back, so hooray. Um, that's to make up for Matt's demo being so awesome. We had to just break the internet for you. In, all right, so in shared dependencies, oh, we already had that question. That's weird. It's like GoToWebinar is repeating the questions that we already answered. I guess it was already starting to fail. Um, oh yeah, this is this is interesting. Uh, Karen wants to know if you're presenting this demo from your basement or from a bomb shelter. <laughs> I am presenting from my basement. I used to have an office upstairs and then my wife kicked me out of it to use it for something else. And so now I just say I work in my wife's basement. <laughs> in your wife's basement. Nice. Um, <laughs> so Pretty might have joined a little bit late. And uh, and when I asked everybody to just put questions in there, um, Pretty asked the question of, if you could just real quickly sum up, what's the obvious use case for this? the benefit of using this over just using Helm. I know you had this earlier, but maybe just revisit it. Sure, I mean, the, the basic idea here is Helm has to take in all these use cases for multi-tenancy, um, people running multiple versions of something or multiple instances of something in the same namespace, has to take all those into account. And that's great for people who wanna run their workloads in clusters. But if you're a cluster administrator who's really focused on things like system services, maybe installing operators, and the one that comes to mind is like a Postgres operator, and maybe you've got uh, you've got a Postgres operator and you want it to depend on something like Prometheus, and then you've got other operators you want to depend on Prometheus or logging, and you want to tightly tie those together as kind of system level things, uh, Helm isn't necessarily great for that situation because of the way it stands things up and handles dependencies it just doesn't have that in mind right now. And so we're building on top of Helm to solve for those kinds of things, which is why I call it uh, package management for cluster operators, because it really solves those kinds of cases for that persona. Okay, that's a, that's a great answer. When, when I dropped off, you were, you were, I had just asked the question about um, rolling this back into Rancher 2.5. Did you hear that question and did that get an answer? Yes, I did answer that one, or I tried to. Okay, good. No, that's that's fine. I'm I'm just trying to to sort through this list of questions to figure out what what was answered, what I answered already that GoToWebinar just didn't record an answer for, and so on. So let me just move down here. Um Detlef actually has uh Detlef says he's working on a, a Helm Charts project for a bigger project and is very interested in, in Hipper and wanted to know if if this is near production release. I said that we'd have that in the roadmap later, but just do you have, can you comment on where this is or do you wanna wait for the roadmap slide? I, I threw the roadmap slide up a little bit ago, but uh, the, okay. the I, I wouldn't say I it's, everything. It's, it's ready for production yet, um, since it's just using Helm on top of it. Uh, or Helm under the hood, you can always revert back to Helm with anything we're doing right now. Um, but this is just the launch. I couldn't tell you when it's going to uh, actually have a stable release yet. Um, this is literally just the 0 0.1.0. Uh, but if you want to kick the tires and give us feedback, I'd love that because it just came out and uh, something coming out from instead of just hearing what's going on in my own head and the other team members who are working on its heads and what we've been doing, it would be great to get feedback from that. And so if it looks like it's something you're up to, we're not gonna support it like it's production ready, but uh, that's kind of where it's at. 
Wow, my internet went away for another 10 seconds there. I thought I was I thought I was done, but we're back, hopefully. Um, if I drop again or if I then you'll just have to take over, which you seem to do fine. Uh, and now this 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 is something that a person who works with Helm charts would directly benefit from. But I know you showed stuff about how ranchers own Helm charts are going to start using this for dependency management. Uh, is this something that people will get benefit from if they're just installing packages from the rancher application catalog? Or is it something that they need to understand how to use and change Helm charts and stuff to build their own things? Uh, if you're using the rancher catalog, if and whenever this gets rolled into there, everything should be transparent and it shouldn't impact you. Uh, this is more for if you wanna take this up on your own and use it because these ideas have been working for Rancher and so now we're kind of packaging them up in a way that can be more generally available and hopefully it's useful for others. Okay. Carol says that um, that that she's aware of Helm caveats that people complain about and would like to know if we're hoping that Hipper solves these problems that Helm has. Can you comment? Like dot, 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 I sort uh, of left that trailing off. Yeah, yeah, so uh, some of them, yes. Some problems are really hard. So one of the biggest complaints I hear over on the Helm side is CRDs. And if you go read the doc, you'll get just an insight that, that I shared earlier, the, the hip on it, an insight into the conversations and time we've put in to thinking about CRDs. And a lot of that has to do with things like assumptions of users, right? Like if a user in one tenant has access to install a CRD and then somebody in another tenant also installs that same thing and you have one CRD and two controllers, which is totally fine, and one upgrades and changes uh, the default version and the other controller can't or somebody removes it. Next thing you know, you've decimated somebody else's workloads in the cluster in a multi-tenant environment and you can break things. And these are like real world concerns for Helm where one tenant kills the applications of another tenant. And so that's something we don't want. But here we're dealing with uh, a cluster admin, somebody who's dealing with their system services and has more insight. And so one of the things here you know, you can think of is you could have a CRD chart and then you could have uh, a chart for the controller and the controller would install the CRD chart. And if you uninstalled the controller, reinstalled it, upgraded it, you can actually manage those separately in a way because that cluster operator has insight across tenants and insight across the cluster. They're able to deal that. So some of those things that have been problems for folks will um, hopefully in certain use cases be easier to do with HIPAA. So we want to try to solve some of those things, but it's because we can be persona specific and use case specific and uh, more opinionated than something like Helm. Mm -hmm. Harsh, what a great name. Harsh would like to know, is it possible to do conditional installations such as, for example, if a particular CRD is present, then install a chart? No. Uh, and, and that's one of those things um, we kind of went back and forth on and talked about. So if you look at the rancher annotations we do now, uh, you'll actually see provides and consumes and it talks about um, uh, group kind version, that kind of thing, right? Um, it was in one of my slides where, and so rancher now does that in our handling. And it turns out that that, hasn't been the best way for us. And one of the lessons that Darren brought to the picture was he said, if we can wrap the CRD up in a chart and then just depend on the chart or the CRDs, that's a much simpler way to handle that problem. Uh, and so that's just one of the lessons. So we're doing it with chart dependencies rather than group version kind dependencies right now. Um, we're trying that out because that's one of the, just one of the lessons uh, that's come out of Rancher doing things. And so it may work, it may not, uh, and we may be starting to poke at group version kind. But even when you think about CRDs and group version kind, right, you get to that version, how does that version line up? It, it can get complicated uh, because with that version, there aren't necessarily point versions and you can change it over time. And so V1 of a CRD versus another V1 of a CRD may be slightly different in the fields and the way you've done things because maybe you added something and 
you didn't have you added some stuff in a backwards compatible way by making them optional and so does that mean you actually have it or don't those optional fields and then that impacts your controller you get some complexities when you're just looking at group version kind where if you have a chart version that wraps that then you've got a more granular version scheme and so you can see do i have all the right fields there because you can look at the chart version and so you get some of those things that make it hard to just look at group version kind, which is why we don't have it. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Complexity is, I used to do a lot of work with Ansible, which is totally unrelated, but I understand about trying to like manage the various things and their relationships. And like, it, it takes two blinks of an eye and you're in a spaghetti ball. Did you answer Harsh's earlier question about uh, if dependency graphs are defined by annotations? Was that, did that happen while uh, I was away? Yeah. Yep. That happened while you were away. Okay. Were you doing everything in annotations? Okay. Wow. Was I gone for that long? Like you answered like eight questions. <laughs> You're just, I'm going to have you run all the meetups from now on. All right. Then I think we've answered all of the questions that we have. Uh, do you have any follow-up slides before we wrap things up. And of course, anybody who wants to throw more questions up there, we'll come back and answer them. Yeah, uh, I would just say, uh, head over to hipper.io and um, you know, uh, you'll get linked to GitHub. We're doing everything on GitHub. You can read the docs, uh, find bugs, try it out. Uh, if you like it, tell your friends. If you don't, don't say anything. Um, and <laughs> Uh, just welcome to the show. I hope this ends up working out. Thanks for the time. Cool. Hang on. We got, uh, oh, and I'm, I'm not going to, I know I'm not going to pronounce your name correctly. I apologize. Uh, but Jiang um, asks that the slides are shareable. So if you joined late, yes, this is being recorded. You will get a copy of the slides or a link to where you can download them, as well as a link to where you can watch the video within about a day or so. We have to do some editing and then get it loaded up onto YouTube to uh, to make sure that works. Uh, and then we have another question that just came in from Sarah. Oh, more questions coming in. I love it. Um, All right. Interesting. Okay, so I, th I think we're gonna have to talk about the name here. Um, if Hipper is a combination of Zipper and Helm, what's the benefit of using that on an Ubuntu or Debian-based Rancher installation? Does it actually have any zipper in it, or is that just the name? No, it's just for the name. We're taking the name because that's the package manager we use at SUSE, and Rancher is now part of SUSE. Uh, okay. And so it's just in the name. There's actually no uh, zipper code in it. Uh, the code that we're using is all written in Go, um, and I think zipper is C or C++. And so, this is really just in the name, and we're taking some of the ideas out of Zipper because Zipper does some really neat things with system level dependency management. And so that served as some sort of in, uh, inspiration. But wherever your Kubernetes cluster is installed, uh, it doesn't really matter. Whatever underlying OS you've got, uh, probably even Windows containers, all of those things, uh, this is just built on top of Helm. It should work anywhere Kubernetes does. Okay. All right, I'm just posting a quick reply to one question that just came in that was unrelated. And I think that's it. So yes, Rancher is now part of SUSE. And that doesn't mean that anything is changing. Rancher comes with all sorts of open source projects that are now part of the SUSE portfolio that join all of the amazing open source projects that SUSE was already releasing to the world. But this is what we have going on in the Rancher world today. Um, this slide will be updated soon to include more stuff, but there's, I mean, honestly, if we put everything, we, we need a web page that actually has everything. So you can get, there's just so much stuff, but we've got, Rancher, RKE and K3S are the Kubernetes distributions. There's also RKE Government, which is uh, also known as RKE2, which is a FIPS 140 compliant Kubernetes distribution that's being used in government installations. There's Longhorn for distributed block storage using containers. There's a hosted Rancher service. If you are an enterprise who wants to use Rancher, but you don't want to have to maintain 
another Kubernetes cluster to do all of your multi-cluster management, we can provide that for you as a SaaS. There's Rancher Fleet, which is GitOps at scale for up to a million clusters. Then for uh, there's Harvester, which is an open source hyper-converged infrastructure system built on top of Kubernetes. There's Submariner for linking your Kubernetes clusters together in a mesh. There's K3OS, which is a, a lightweight operating system that's managed entirely from within Kubernetes. And then Rancher Rio is up here too, but Rio is actually evolving into something else. So I'm, that's all we're going to say about that. But if you liked, if you knew about Rio and you're curious what happened to it, just sit tight because you're going to hear pretty soon about what happened and what what's coming. We have lots of resources available for you to learn more about Rancher. There's master classes, meetups like this, webinars. Uh, there's the SUSE Rancher community, which I meant to actually put that slide again at the end, but I don't know if I did. But community.susa.com has classes. And that's where you're going to see trainings on K3S, for example, starting in a couple of weeks. You're going to see more trainings on Rancher. You're going to see trainings on RKE. So you'll be able to go there and get all of the stuff that you need to learn about how to do the various things about Rancher. And we've revamped the training system to, to try and make it so we can release that content more quickly and update it as fast as the projects themselves change. There's also YouTube channels. There's the Rancher YouTube channel. And I also have a YouTube channel that has a lot of tutorials and how-to stuff about Rancher stuff, as well as other open source Kubernetes ecosystem projects and how to build them into your Kubernetes environments. The Rancher Academy is something that we've been running for a little more than a year now, and it is amazing. It's an intensive five-week course on, well, if you spend three to five hours a week on it, it'll take you five weeks to complete it. And this is everything that you need to know about deploying RKE, deploying Rancher into RKE, and then how to use a Rancher cluster to deploy and manage Kubernetes in other environments. It is, it's being updated. I would say it's been out for a year. Um, and I mentioned a moment ago about trying to update content as fast as the products change. It's hard because um, the product changes. And then by the time we get new content built, the product has changed again. So we're, we're definitely working to solve that problem. But even though this content is a year old, the core components of it will still serve you perfectly well today. So if you are interested in learning more about how to do stuff in an enterprise environment and how to really get deep into troubleshooting and deployments and all the options that are available to you, the Rancher Academy is your place to go. And I don't have the community slide up, but remember that was community.susa.com and that's the new site. So go check that out. And I saw that somebody had a question um, about what that means for other stuff that we have going on. And I recommended that uh, that you go to the community and ask your questions there. So there's still Rancher user Slack, there's community, there's forums, there's all sorts of places for you to go to find people who work on stuff like you and to get your questions answered and to, to really take advantage of this entire community that exists around everything that Rancher has built. And that now we gotta figure out how to talk about this Rancher SUSE thing, because. It's hard to just say that SUSE has built because it's it's Rancher, but it's all open source. It's all here for you. One last check of the questions. We have a question from Carol who says, K3OS seems aimed for edge. For an on-prem environment, which operating system flavor do you recommend? Um, which operating flavor do you recommend? Honestly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. All we need to run, so everything that we're producing is designed to be open and interoperable. And what that means is that you can pick and choose the pieces that work for you. So even though SUSE bought Rancher, Rancher will still run in any Kubernetes cluster. You can deploy K3S on any Linux operating system. It's all being built in such a way that you use the tools that are right for you. So if you want to run this stuff on Ubuntu, on Debian, on Red Hat, on CoreOS on Talos, knock yourself out. It's all still going to work. Now, for those who purchase a support agreement, there are some operating systems that we do certify that it will run on as part of our service level agreement. But even that includes SUSE Linux, Red Hat, CentOS, 
uh, Debian, Ubuntu. So there's a whole range of Linux operating systems that are in there. All the major ones, you know, you're not going to find like Mint or Arch or some of the more obscure ones because there's just not enough demand for us to put those into our service level agreement. But that said, they'll probably still work just fine. So if that's what you want to use, give it a shot. It'll probably work great. Oh, we got another question from Bradley. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, Matt. This is a question for you. Um, will the HIPAA binaries run on ARM, specifically on Raspberry Pi 4? Uh, they, uh, I don't know if we're compiling for that, but they should have compiled for it. Let me go look real quick. Okay. If they don't right now, it's not because we're excluding them. It's just that they haven't been compiled for it, but all of our major binaries, like we, we do build for, AMD 64, as well as the various ARM architectures, because we do have people who run K3S on Raspberry Pis. There's the whole you know, EC2 ARM infrastructure. Like ARM's a legit chipset. It's a legit instruction set. So as much as possible, we want to make sure that our stuff runs. It goes back to what I said a minute ago. We want to make sure that our stuff runs wherever you need it to run, because we're building it for you. Uh, the answer is yes. And if there's something wrong with it, it's a bug. Let us know. Okay. Yeah, he says he uses a Raspberry Pi 4 for dev and staging, but he works on ARM servers in production. So definitely check this out, like pull Hipper down, see if it runs. And if for whatever reason it doesn't, like we need people like you who are actually using this in those kinds of scenarios and let us know your experience. If it doesn't work, we'll fix it so it does. And that was the last question. Oh my gosh, that was the last slide. Take that back off the black screen. All right, so we're three minutes over the hour that we had scheduled. I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank Matt for doing an amazing job of presenting. Uh, and I encourage all of you to go to hipper.io, download this, kick the tires, open issues, tell us your experience, let us know what we need to do. All right. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. Everybody stay safe. And we'll see you next month.